Hey, folks, Quillington here, and welcome, welcome, welcome to a Saturday double feature live stream. And uh, I guess the uh, terraforming Mars music is a little bit louder than the background music we had going before. There we go. Let's bring that down a scooch and get the main screen turned on. Hey, everybody. Happy Saturday. Happy Eurovision Day. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, excited to be streaming today because uh, I'm gonna be playing two of my favorite games, Terraforming Mars. I've done videos for it before. I really like this game. It's one of the board games I own in real life. Uh, I've played a ton with my friends. Uh, it's got this beautiful digital version that's available in like all the things, iOS, Android. Uh, it was free last week in the Epic Game Store. Um, it's also on GOG and Steam. Today we're doing a sponsor stream for Terraforming Mars because new DLC just dropped uh, with the um, Hellas and Elysium expansion, I believe it's called, um, which adds two new maps to the game, which actually does change a lot of the strategy. Um, it, these new maps also include new milestones and wards. If none of this makes any sense to you, don't worry, we're gonna do some explanation. Um, I really, really do enjoy this game quite a lot. Uh, so very happy to be doing it. If you do exclamation mark what game, which I will do now, there will be a link where you can click on and check out the details of the expansion pack over on Steam. Uh, we're gonna read some resubs and some, uh, one, one uh, contribution to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund before we get started. Dun, 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 dun. Wish TI4 gonna, yeah. I mean, I love how many people have finally gotten to like creating digital versions of their board game and a lot of them are really good. I mean, we've had some for a while, but there's like this new level of, of excellence in implementation of these digital board games, um, which is really great. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Okay, let's quickly read through those and we'll get started on the game. And so we're gonna do this for two hours and then it's gonna be RimWorld for a couple hours uh, with the company with a few mod changes that we're gonna experiment with. If it goes badly, we can revert to the existing mod list, but um, something something combat extended. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and let's start with the uh, the resubs. So first we got Lucas coming in at uh, six months total and suspect agent just now at four months. Thank you very much. J4A, ace man, 56 month resub. Daedalus is at 87 months. Conan Barbarians at four months. Traconium at 25 months says, let's go to Mars. How many games do we play that involve going to Mars? Slash Duna. <clears throat> Weird Darkness has 36 months. That's a three year Twitch anniversary. It says Lamborghini Quillardo. Ooh, I like that. We should play automation again. I should make a Quillardo. Korax Wolves is also at 36 months. Thank you very much. Spotnik is at 29 months. Civilianer is at 62. No one hears what he appears at 46 months. Two to go and I will be sprouted indeed. Swedish Twig. Yeah, the little icons in chat. Swedish Twig's at 38 months. Incandescent Goat is at 47. Juna is at 37 months in. Oh no, sorry, it's 37 in a row. 60 total. Yes, I can see this now, Juna. Juna doesn't always have the uh, pop-ups for some reason. Uh, when uh, when they resubscribe, but that's a five-year Twitch anniversary. Juno's also one of her characters in RimWorld. Poor guy, uh, he's already had a heart attack, right? And he's got the double cataracts. Oof, we better get some bionics going soon. Blazing Pyro is at 69 months. Yes, very nice indeed. Casual Dave's at 14 months. Temporal Mouse is at 11. Nuclear Raisins at 32 months. Silas is at 91 months. Zixki at 40 months, Kim Dead is at 31, and Morkor has resubbed for 22 months. Uh, we've also got some new subs. Revised Bionic is subbed for the first time and gifted subs uh, to people in the chat, which is really quite nice. Thank you very much, Revised Bionic, for that. I will remind everyone, if you do have Twitch Prime, make sure to hit that bouton because it doesn't auto-resubscribe, uh, so you can do a free sub uh, to someone of your choice. Before the stream started, Morkor uh, gave a awesome whiskey and chocolate donation. Thank you very much for that, much appreciated. It says, thank you for all the joy you bring to the world. May the whiskey and chocolate help keep the spark going. And yeah, uh, thank you very much, Morcor, and uh, I hope everything's going okay for you. Uh, no one here is what he appears, also contributed to his skin chocolate fun. Love the pre-stream music, what is it? Everyone please send good thoughts to my parents this week. They discovered they had honeybees in their house walls because honey was dripping down the wall. I've seen that happen, like I've seen Reddit posts and stuff like that. Yeah, that's crazy, what a pain in the butt. Um, the pre-stream music, I, uh, I use a service called Pretzel Rocks. Um, 
Playlist, which uh, has like YouTube safe and stream safe music. Uh, and that was the Chiptunes channel. And if ever you're listening to a song uh, while it's playing, you can do exclamation mark song and it will do that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Boom, 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 boom. Will you be open to maybe trying Blood Rage digital version? I don't know what that is. Maybe, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Just since it's futile. All right. Let's go ahead. So Terraforming Mars is a board game about terraforming Mars. You are one of several corporations that will be, uh, that have been hired by, I guess the UN or whatever on Earth to terraform Mars over a series of generations. And in the end, the corporation that has done the best job of terraforming Mars or bribing the committee uh, will uh, will be declared the winner. We're gonna play, I like playing with four players. Uh, you can play with up to five. Um, I felt I always felt four was like a nice number. We're gonna go into hard AI over here. Um, uh, oh, very exciting. So um, I think I did a video when once this came out at some point. Draft variant is now built into the digital version over here. It's a very uh, popular um, optional rule that you can play with. I'm gonna leave it off just because it adds a little bit more time. Um, it does it does allow you to make crazier um, crazier builds, but I'm gonna leave it off just because it's a little simpler. The, if you are playing for the first time, standard game is a good way to get started, but the um, corporate era rules is the is the real game. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We'll do multiplayer Terraforming Mars with Ava and Essentia. That could be interesting. That could be interesting. I don't know how, how into it uh, Essentia would be um, to Terraforming Mars. Um, but there are other board games we might do, we'll see. Uh, Prelude is one of the expansions for Terraform Mars that has come to digital version. Uh, it's actually really cool. It gives you some extra cards to play at the start of the game that dramatically accelerates the gameplay. Uh, I think it's a wonderful expansion. I'm gonna leave it off just so we can focus on the core stuff over here. And then the big thing with the new um, with the new expansion are the new maps. There's the default map of Tarsus, which is where we normally play. And then there's now the Hellas and Elysium maps that have been added in. And if I I do click on my own link to get to the Steam page here. So, um, Elysium. Discover the astonishing Elysium and the other face of Mars. Peppered with some highly valuable placement bonuses, a great deal of them is situated on Olympus Mons and other similar volcanic sites. Grab them quickly or risk losing the spots forever. And then with Hellas, uh, it's the Hellas Sea and the South Pole. Play around the two new placement bonuses on the map. Uh, the first yields heat while the other gives player an ocean in exchange for six mega credits. Such a deal comes only once, however. Would you guys prefer that we played on Elysium or Hellas? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hellas? All right. Hellas? All right. Hell it is, there, done. Um, well, even all the corporations, including the prelude ones, the new prelude projects as well. I just won't use the actual prelude cards themselves. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be choosing our corporation. You can play with the beginner corporation. So the way it's d uh, the game works is at the start of the game, you are given 10 cards, these are your project cards. This is how you um, will actually do a lot of things to interact with the game. It's not exclusively, there's also standard project and stuff. The beginner corporation, you just keep all 10, done. Um, Normally what happens is you have to purchase some of those project cards to actually retain. So you're given 10, you have to purchase uh, however many you want to actually play with, discarding the rest. Um, and you do that with the advanced corporations, which is what we're gonna do over here. Um, interesting, interesting. These are actually, huh, ha 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 ha. Okay, so we're being offered credit core, which is just their big thing is they have a lot of money. We start with 57 mega credits as opposed to 42, although we do have to use some of those to buy some cards. In addition to that, whenever we pay for a project that costs 20 or more, we gain four back. So in a sense, we get a four mega credit discount on anything that's very expensive, uh, but we do have, an, have to enough money to do it right away. Yeah, credit core is nice, but no fun. Maybe, yeah. What is Vitor? Uh, we start with 45 mega credits. As your first action, fund an award for free. Oh, that's quite interesting. And then when you play a card with a non-negative VP icon, including this, gain three mega credits. Okay, whenever we play something that's got victory points on it, we get some money back. I've never seen Vitor. I think it's part of the prelude pack, or actually it might be part of the expansion. Now in the physical version, you would get a little symbol on these corporations to tell you where they come from. Um, oh. Wait, hold on. That's probably what this is. I'm betting this is with, yeah, this is with the new expansion. So we'll do this because it's new. Uh, 
Now, what you do, you don't actually have to lock in. You do sort of lock in whether you're going beginner or whether you're going with one of the two specialties. But once we've picked the corporation, it's gonna show us our list of 10 cards that we have available over here. What you can do is you can look at these and you can go back and change corporations. Although notice we can't go to the beginner corp at this point. Uh, this is quite useful if you have one that's like really synergistic with say lots of energy cards and another one that's really synergistic with a lot of space cards. Well, as long as you lock in that you're gonna be playing with the proper corporation, then you can look at your cards and then go back and, and make a choice over there. For example, if we saw a bunch of cards that cost 20 or more here, we might decide after all to go to credit card. Now there's only two, although they're pretty decent, um, but we're gonna stick with this one over here uh, regardless. And what we're looking for to synergize here with our corporation is cards with victory points, which is what you're seeing over here. But the big thing what we're looking for early on is cards that are gonna generate some economy with me. Yeah, sure, that was always an option because it's in the um, it's in the physical rules. Um, when you get handed your your uh, your corporations to choose from, uh, you also get handed your ten cards, and you can you can look at everything, make a decision. If you're playing with Prelude as well, you get to look at your Prelude cards all at the same time too before you lock in, which is really handy dandy. All right. So the main uh, goal is to end up with the most points. Well, that is the only goal, end up with the most points. A big sort of points is gonna be your terraforming rating, which starts at 20 for everyone. This 20 is also, your terraformer rating is also how much money you're gonna start with every single round. So if you increase your terraforming rating, you gain more points for the win. You also gain um, more money that you can spend every single round, which is great. We can also get points from these project cards that have points printed on them over here. So this does not change your terraforming rating, but it does give you more points for the end of the game. Game. Um, there's also, uh, based on where you place things like cities and greeneries on the Martian map, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. oh, pointing out. Okay, based on things you do on like the Martian map, there's other points that you can get from there as well. Um, so in terms of building up the early economy, the mine's actually fairly nice. It's cheap to, to place down and just gives you some steel production immediately. And that's not a bad thing. Peroxide power lowers our income by one. Um, and we can go negative. So down here, is this is all the resources we currently have. And in uh, brown here, this is how much we're producing each generation. So we could actually have a minus one for our income. We'd still get 20 minus one, uh, and then it would generate two power. Uh, the rover construction is quite interesting over here. Whenever any city tile is placed, I gain $2. So you build this early. It's worth a victory point by itself. And it will earn us some money over time. It'll pay for itself. Now, the thing is though, um, it does cost you some of your money at the start of the game for money a little bit later. Um, I'm not sure. This is quite appealing. This is a, it's got a little building tag over here, which these tags are used for a variety of different things in the game. Um, and one of the things with the building tag is uh, you can offset the cost by spending steel instead. So this can become a lot cheaper. I'm not sure this appeals to me currently. It can be very good. I'm just not sure that we're in that situation. I like something like uh, solar wind power early on generates one power per generation and gives us two titanium instantly. Titanium can be used to offset the cost of space projects, which is what the star is over here. And cards with lots of tags are quite useful because lots of other cards will do things based on what tags you have in play. They might have a requirement um, and they might have a, um, um, uh, they they might they might have bonuses right like for every blah power tag you have get get thingy um, so cards with lots of tags are quite good science tags in particular are very valuable because there's a lot of cards that have a requirement for science tags and tend to have science tags themselves so you can sort of build up uh, there's there's a card that has like is it seven science tags requirement six or seven for sure at least six for sure um, so you can you can stack that. There are a variety of standard projects you can do as well, uh, which include, for example, placing an ocean. Now, I think this is normally cost, the ocean, I can't remember if it's 18 or 21, what the cost is for the standard project. Um, but this lets you do it cheaper. Now, cost 11, it's a little bit misleading because you have to pay four mega credits to purchase this project card into your hand. So effectively, this is gonna cost us 15. It's still a discount for placing the ocean and might be worthwhile. Small Animals has a requirement that the oxygen level is at least 6% before we put it down. Um, but then it starts to, you can accrue every generation some animal points on this card. And then at the end of the game, you get uh, a victory point for every two animals on this card at the end. So you can do that. And there's various combos you can set up as well with that. Um, 
mineral rich uh, asteroid. It raises your terraforming rating by two, re increasing the temperature by one, which also gives you terraforming rating. So effectively, this gives you three terraforming rating, which is three points at the end of the game, as well as three income boost. Um, it also will either give you plant production, or if you have three plant tags on your cards, it will give you four plant production. Um, it's a nice card as is. If you can, if you've got the plant tags as well, it's really nice. Mm hmm. Uh, lava flow will put a random, will put a volcano in a tile, which makes the tile unusable, but increases the temperature by two. Like, this is not a bad way to boost your economy early on, because again, raising the temperature increases your terraforming rating, which gives you more money and more points. So effectively, we pay 22 for this. This would give me two money per turn as well as two victory points. Um, and it's it's very easy. And and wherever we place this volcano, we will get the resources that are in a tile. So for example, if I place the volcano right here, um, doing that on this tile, which is very special and unique to this map, I can then spend six more Meta Credits to place an ocean tile uh, on any of the blue tiles over here, which will further increase my terraforming rating some more. And it's really nice. Or I could place a volcano here and I would just draw a card or, um, or over here, get a card and a plant. You know, so there's a lot of really neat stuff that we can do. Oh. Windmills are wonderful, but we do need, we might want to get it because it's got a victory point. So we get extra benefit from that. It does need 7% air, but hopefully it comes fairly quickly. Oh, I don't know what to start off with. If expensive cards tend to be fairly cost effective because you're always paying four for every card. So this is effectively costing us 32. This gives us a lot though. It gives us two heat and two plant production. It only needs 2% oxygen, which will happen pretty fast. 7% oxygen is quite a lot. It's going to take a while before we can build windmills. I don't think it makes sense to, for us to pick it up right now because it's just going to sit in our hand idle for a while, um, which does make me sad because it's quite good. I'm kind of tempted to grab the, wa the lava flow. We're going to be third to act. Hopefully there's still going to be a good spot for it. You would start with windmills and rovers for sure. And of course mine. Yeah, um, so we can take the mine. I think the mine's a no-brainer. Cost us eight, generate one steel per turn. A steel is worth two bucks, so it pays for itself in four turns. Um, and that's certainly not bad. The rover will effectively cost us 12, so it'll pay for itself after six cities have been placed. Um, it's also worth a victory point, and it, we have a discount of two effectively with this, so that seems okay as well. Oh, I'm just saying it costs three or four to pick up a card. It's three to pick up a card, my bad. I'm wondering about the solar wind power. I don't, the windmills is excellent. I'm just worried that we might not be, it, it'll just sit idle for too long and we'll curse having spent the three early. It is really good. But like, so look this, so again, this costs us a total of nine. Well, minus two effectively, it's a seven for us. It gives us a power and a victory point. If we compare over here, it gives, it's more expensive we don't get the discount. It still gives us power. It gives us titanium. It's got the science tag, which is really nice. Yeah, we would like some power. We can also do it peroxide power. Cost us the income, get lots of power. Oh, hey, Demonac. You personally passed on the mill. It's not strong enough. She's sitting in your turn for that long. Yeah. <sighs> Science tags are only good if you get a crap ton of them, but it would be really nice if we did. I'm kind of tempted to grab this and hope we see more science tags later on. Uh, that's, that's maybe less good without the draft variant, though. Okay, let's figure out. We're going to pay nine, so we're going to have 39 bucks left over. Um, and then we'd like to play Lava Flow, certainly, which is 18. Mine right away, which brings us to 22. Rover Construction right away, which brings us to 30 which means we have nine bucks left over. Oh, actually, it's a little cheaper because we get some money back. I'm tempted to grab peroxide power. I think we could play everything. I think if we do this, because I don't think I calculated the two offset, I think we're going to be able to dump everything or nearly everything. I won't be able to play if I go to the solar panel, the power, because it'll be a little too expensive. I think. Because this leaves me to 36. 32. Um, 
This effectively cost me six bucks. So I'd be left with 26, 15, and then I'm short three. Still might be okay. I don't have to play everything immediately. So if I take Peroxide Power instead of Wind Power, I can play everything in my hand. On the other hand, the Solar Power is not bad. We could wait a turn. In that way, like, maybe I could just take the Windmills instead. I could actually take the Windmills and the Peroxide Power. I, I would be able to play the Peroxide Power this turn and at some point later get the Windmills. Maybe we'll do that. Power generation is really nice, especially if we're going to play cities, which we're going to hope for a lot of cities with Rover. Yeah, I don't know if we can win power next turn. I don't think there's going to be enough oxygen, but I think we'll go with this. Oh, yeah, we can volcano placement for steel. Oh, or no, I'm thinking we volcano placement for the ocean. Which is going to cost us six. So, you know what? I'm going to drop the peroxide power. I'll, I will grab the windmills for later. I know, I know we talked about the oxygen requirement. I think we're going to hold on to it for later. I don't know. Let's just go. <laughs> the pro the, with this, there's going to be a lot of... Uh, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of backseating going on. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. Uh, so there is fertilizer in the fig soil. Okay. You want to plant a fig forest? I do love figs. They're delicious. Don't get them very often, but they are very good. All right. So the eye is going to take their turn. We're third here. We're in blue. Which is going to confuse me because I always play as green. And so I should have... Uh, I think you can set your color at the start of the game. So I should have done that. There's almost certainly going to be a situation where I get confused uh, in terms of who I am here. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. As Vitor, we found an award for free. So... The Away Awards work is anyone can fund them, and at the end of the game, the person with the most blah gets five extra victory points, and the second place who with the, mo you know, the second most blah gets two victory points. We're having to guess here. At Vitor, we get to fund one of these for free. We're going to have to guess as to what we might be able to compete with, which I wasn't thinking about. You know what we might do is we might compete for Contractor. I know Interplanetary Cinematics is two already, but that's building tags. We got three in our hand. And we're going to have some uh, some steel, which is going to let us uh, continuously build these um, building tags for cheaper. So I'm thinking of doing this and going hard on building tags. It's hard because we're going completely blind. Quill the Builder. I mean, yeah, sure. You know what? Hang on. Ugh. All right. I'm a contractor now. It's good. All right, so that was our first action. The way it works is on your turn, you can play... You can either pass, and you pass for the entire generation, you don't do anything else until the next generation. Or you can play one or two actions. You can play up to two actions at that point. Um, if you play one, you can skip your second one, and it'll come back around to you, um, which can let you do some timing shenanigans and things like that. Not usually a fan of it, but sometimes we might have to do that. I think the first thing we do is play Lava Flows. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to drop it here for the ocean and then put the ocean here for the card. It'll also be next to an ocean tile, which will give me two monies back. Uh, I didn't pick any, pre we didn't, we're not playing with preludes. So I'm going to Lava Flow, spend 18. Uh, it's also going to give us heat generation, which is nice. Talk about this in a sec. Oh, sorry, I misinterpreted. It was previewing where it was going to be. I thought it was uh, showing me uh, what it was at. Mm. Oh, well, it's fine. Okay, so we're going to play it here, and now, so it's increased the heat by two. You can see the heat meter over here. Um, if whoever raises it to minus 24 as an average will get one permanent heat generation forever. So it's quite nice to grab those if you can, um, but I'm still going to go ahead and play with this. It's going to be fine. So now I believe I get to place an ocean. So I'm going to place it here. I could place it here for two titanium. Um, titanium can be exchanged, can be used to boost space projects and are worth three mega credits each. Sound effects are pretty loud. Uh, no, 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 no. Right, let's bring it down somewhere like this. We'll be bringing up the animation speed fairly soon as well. Yeah, I'll put it there. So whenever you place a tile next to an ocean, it gives you two mega credits as well. So we actually have a little bit more money to spend than I'd expected. Um, and then we'll, when it's our turn, we'll take a look at what card we got. Yeah, I could play for, for, for the heat for the permanent plus one. If it, if it still hasn't been raised by the time it comes around to us, we will have a think about that. 
I go Titanium would have been a safer pick, because there's a chance we'd get a card that is pointless. The one nice thing about playing with AI, then I don't feel bad about using attack cards. Now, ooh, they're going heavy on the greenery, which is actually suits me okay, because I did take the windmill card, right? So if they get their um if they get keep raising the oxygen, we're gonna be okay, but it has to get the 7% before we can play that. Okay, what do we get? We got rad suits! Oh, they're totally rad! Um, this is fantastic for us. So there needs to be at least two cities in play. But when as soon as there is, we play Rad Suits. It permanently increases our income by one. And it's got a victory point on it, which is great, especially for us. We get extra value. Yeah, the AI goes pretty early on greenery. Um, there is something you said if you're very strong at the game, um, even on hard, you will probably have an okay time beating the AI. Um, in which case, uh, my friend Demonac, who's in the chat, came up with a really fun, like, personal challenge where, uh, you aren't allowed to fund milestones or awards. You can still compete for awards, but you can't fund them and that, to give the AI a bit of a help. So we talked about awards, right? Anyone can fund them, and then once they're funded, at the end of the game, there's, you know, there's this challenge and whoever gets it gets bonus points. Three awards in total can get funded. The first one normally costs eight. We did it for free. The second one will cost 14. The third one will cost 20. So if there's an, uh, an award you, you think you've got a good chance of winning, you want to fund it as early as possible so that's cheap. On the other hand, the sooner one of these is funded, the sooner all the other players are like, well, I'm going to compete for this as well. So right now, a lot of people are going to be incentivized to pick up building tags, but, you know, we'll see. Milestones are different. Milestones, uh, only three of them can get um, can get funded, can get purchased. Uh, they always cost eight, and the way these work is um, you buy them when you meet the requirements, and you immediately get your five points at that point. Well, or your five points are locked in. It's not a competition. It's whoever can buy it, buys it, and they're locked in as the person who have hit that milestone. So uh, as soon as you've got eight different tags in play, for example, you can buy Diversifier, and then you will have five pro points at the end of the game, which is great. Tactician is cards with requirements. Polar Explorer is requires that you have three tiles on the two bottom rows. Energizer, and these are different for each map, right? These are specific to this map. Energizer, six energy production. Maybe we could go for that one. And the Rim Settler means we have three Jovian tags. Uh, so like Jupiter type cards. Uh, so the AI is, is trying to go for the Polar Explorer quite quickly here. Um, we, we have a volcano, so we count as one of those, right? I assume that got tagged as ownership. Uh, Polar Explorer, yeah, yeah. So we have a presence there. I know that's something we could consider. Right now, um, we definitely want to get the mine and the rover constructor down, I would say. We've got enough money for both of those. That's 12. We've got 14 left. We'll get two bucks back as well. I can't play this because the auction. I can't play this because of that. I could instead... These standard projects are always available. An asteroid costs 14 and raises the temperature one step, which also increases my terraforming rating by one. If I did that, first of all, increasing your terraforming rating gives you more income. So the sooner you do it, it's nice. Um... The other thing is, in this particular situation, it would get us to here, which would give me plus one heat generation forever. Now, I don't think heat generation is as valuable as steel, but it's 14 for an income and a heat and a victory point versus the mine, which is steel. And I don't think there's going to be a city super early, but there's always a chance that there's a super early city, in which case, as soon if we get this rover construction down early, if we don't get it as early as possible, we'll miss out on two bucks. I think we go for the heat. It's hard, but let's do it. So we'll increase the heat. There we go. Giving us a heat production from now on. Every time you have eight heat banked, you can use it to increase the temperature one step for free. I mean, it costs you the eight heat, but it doesn't cost you any money. The heat is on. Uh, and then my second action, I've got literally nothing I can do anymore. I have no actions. I can't afford any cards. I could sell some of my cards. So this is it costs zero and then you sell a card back for a buck. Um, but I'm not interested in doing that. I'm still happy with all the cards that we've got. So I'm going to skip my second action of the turn. I'm still in the game. I'm still in this generation. I haven't passed completely. But when it comes back to me, I will pass. Because, like, yeah, everyone has passed and it's still me. Now, I'm third in a turn order. What's going to happen here is the player who started the round is going to go down to the bottom. Everyone's going to move up one. So I'm going to be second act in the next round. What I'm going to do before we go any further is I'm now going to go ahead and make the animations very fast. In fact, I might end up going to skip all at some point, but we're going to go ahead. I'm going to pass my entire turn. 
That move also denied the AI chance to get heat production. Yeah, like they might have asteroided, they might have um, gotten a free heat production or incidental or cheap heat production, and they would have gotten that. So that's true. Not only am I getting it for me, I'm denying it from someone else. So there is extra value in doing that. The standard projects don't, they're not as card or cost efficient usually as the uh, cards, although the cards, you have to pay the three buck premium for them. Um, but so I tend to, you know, you don't want to look at the standard projects as your expected moves, but they're still quite good. Okay, so keep in mind, I still have four cards in my hand, and I, I would like to play the mine and the rover construction this turn, for sure. Maybe there, if there's two cities, I'll play the rad suits um, as well, but I'm not really expecting that this early. So, the physics complex is quite interesting. First of all, it's another builder... Oh, yeah, so at the start of each new generation, there's Born a Slayer. Wait, sorry. Start of each new generation, we draw four new project cards, and we can buy however many we want. With the draft variant, what happens, you get the four, you pick one to set aside, pass the three to your person to your left, get the three there, pick one, do that. So then you end up with a set of four cards that you've drafted, and then you purchase them. Um, so with the draft variant, you end up being able to build more powerful combos. Um, but, you know, but I'm not playing with draft variant over here. So we need, physics complex is very good. We need six energy. You need to spend six energy, and you add a token to this card. And at the end of the game, you get two points for every token on this card. Now, there is a milestone for getting to six energy. We have the windmills. I wonder, is it worth grabbing it and trying to YOLO to energy as quickly as possible? Because we can also um, build power plants for 11, which increases our power. I'm not convinced that's the winning play. But it's quite cool. Yeah, draft is better but slower. And it was that. It was it, it just that. I was just trying to make it go fast. Um, Psychrophiles. You have to play it when the temperature is twenty C or colder. So we have to play it early. And what it means when you play uh, when paying for a plant card. Um, so you can load microbes on this, and then when you play plant cards later, you can get a discount um, by spending the the microbes on this. So it does give you a bit of an engine if you're going to get plant cards. I don't think I'm going to grab this over here. Uh, media archives, uh, gain one and see for every event ever played by all players. It's a nice late game one to play and get a cash injection. Asteroid's quite cool. So this is an event card. It doesn't stay in play. So it actually doesn't count towards, uh, magnate, which are green cards. So blue cards have actions on them. Those red cards are actions, uh, events. Uh, so they don't really stick around, uh, the same way. And green cards just have a persistent bonus. Um, the thing is, it's not bad. Raise the temperature a notch. It gives us two titanium. So it actually pays for itself pretty well because it's one income and this is going to be worth six bucks by itself. And it removes three plants from somewhere else. It's kind of a jerk move, but it's only AI. So I don't mind. I would love to do this physics pro complex thing, but there's no, there's no guarantee that we're going to be able to get more power cards. If there was one I could draft now, I would grab it, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Complex is cool if you get CEO's favorite project. That's true, because it puts two tokens on anything you want. This won't give us a discount, I think, because it doesn't have a, a victory point locked in. I don't know if I'd get two bucks back from this, from my, my corporation. Would I? It doesn't make it cheaper, but the thing is, I need six power to use it, and we have, we have nothing. I think I'm going to grab the asteroid, because it's very entertaining. And I'm not going to grab anything else. I got lots of cards in hand. I can always do some standard projects. I can always just bank money for the next turn. Keep in mind, we're not going to have as much this turn as uh, before because we only had we had the 21 from our um, terraforming rating. Or sorry, 24 from our terraforming rating. I just spent three, so I only have 21 bucks left. I'm, I'm going to keep thinking I'm green. It's going to happen. Deal with it. Um, what I think I'm going to do... So if I just pass right now, I get, don't get to do anything. Um, I would like to play the asteroid this turn if it would get me another heat production. The problem is I can't do all of them. I'd like to get... I want to get the mine because I want to get the steel production. I'd like... I want to get the rover construction in play before someone places a city. And I'll be really disappointed if someone plays it. Um, they, they don't have enough money to play a city, but they might have a card in hand that lets them play a city a little cheaper. It's pretty unlikely. I think I can assume a city's not going to get played. Uh, you're right, someone did just place a city. God damn. Yeah. Or, or orange over here, or pink over here. Well, I missed out on that regardless, so there's nothing I can do about it. Um, 
I think the thing to do is go mine and pass. Hope someone increases the temperature one notch, and then I'll asteroid to um to, to increase the temperature to the next level. And eat the plants, assuming people have enough plants. We'll see. So we're gonna go with mine. I have to play at least do at least one action or skip the hundred generation. Now I can end my turn and wait for the next go. Let's see. My favorite card in the whole game is Deimos Down, which is basically like the asteroid card, but much more because you're actually crashing the moon into the planet. And the flavor text is, we didn't need that moon anyway. Nuke that city. I wonder what, I wonder what was under that tile. Cause I'm surprised they didn't go here next to two greeneries. Cities get bonus points at the end of the game for being next to greeneries and it would give them a, a, a card as well, but it must've had like some steel or titanium or something. Uh, okay, so no one increased the temperature, which is too bad. Does anyone have three plants? Two plants. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is Asteroid, because I'm going to go first next round, so I can place the Rover Constructor next round before anyone else has a chance to build a city. Um, it would be nice to eat all three plants. It would also be nice to get the extra heat here, but I want to play the asteroids as early as possible to raise the terraform rating to get more things. So I think I'll just do this. Also, what I could do next turn, since I go first, is um, I could just, you know, as my first action, uh, raise the heat again for this. But yeah, I'm just going to do this. I don't know if it's the right play, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Boom. We'll have to grab a space card at some point so that we can... Um, uh, spend this titanium on something. So yeah, we're going to take away two plants from interplanetary cinematics over here. Could have been three. I could have just waited longer for the asteroid, but again, the, the sooner you get the income, the better it is. Uh, so I only have three bucks. I can't do a standard project other than sell patents. I have no actions. I have no cards I can afford. I will skip. And then on my next turn, I'll do a pass. Yeah, people are mostly going to be passing, I think. Yeah, good. Excellent. God, I love this game so much. It's, it's, what I like about this game, it's the right mix of, um, sort of soft competition for things. There's some card games that are really good about like building engines and doing the sort of strategy that we really love, right? Setting up some combos and generating income and stuff like that. But sometimes they feel like, like you're playing a solitaire game. You're just playing your own solitaire game. And then your friend next to you is playing their solitaire game. And then the next friend and so on and so forth. And then there are others that are really cutthroat direct competition. I don't like those that make me anxious. This is great because there's so much interaction based on, you know, you've got cards with temperature or oxygen requirements, for example. And so what other people are doing to raise the oxygen or temperature affects you. There are places on the board that you want to play and other people are going to be placing things in maybe in your way or placing it in such a way that you've got a good advantage. Like these two greeneries make me really want to drop a city right here, for example. Um, and so sometimes you get in each other's way, solitaire scythe, I, scythe, you're right. Scythe is mostly uninteractive with occasional bit of combat. Um, uh, suburbia is a good example of that. Although because you've got the shared, um, the shared real estate track, there's some interactivity there. Uh, plus there's some goals you're working towards. So like these awards and milestones are in interesting too, because you're sort of interacting that way. So I like it every now and again, except for the attack cards to eat someone plant those. We really, we really don't like those in our multiplayer games. Cause they always, it's like, we tend to not draft the attack cards. The asteroids are a little different because they do something good for you and have an incidental sort of F you to someone else. Uh, some of these are just pure attack cards and we're like, I don't know, man, feels bad. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and pass. Oh yeah, Agricola is interesting for that because there's almost zero interaction except because it's a worker placement game and only, you know, if someone places their worker on the, they need, they need wheat. So they place their worker on the thing to grab the wheat. No one else can go on the wheat tile. So again, it's, <laughs> you get in each other's way, but in this sort of soft pressure. Okay, Large Convoy is an excellent card. Very interesting. Um, very expensive. Uh, we won't be able to afford it. Almost, because our titanium is worth a total of six over here, right? Three each. I think I'm getting that one right. I just played a game as Phobos, so I was a little screwed up on the numbers. Um, 
But it's going to cost us three to buy this card. So we need 39 to buy this, which we don't have enough to do. But it gives you two cards back. Cards are worth three bucks each to buy, right? Now, sometimes you get a loser card, but sometimes you get a great one. Place an ocean, increase terraforming rating, um, potentially get some good bonuses and stuff like that. And then either gives us five plants or puts four animals on a card. If we grab that small animal card, we could have loaded up some extra tokens on there. We can't quite afford it. Earth Office is interesting. It's whenever you play an Earth tag, which... Um, is this icon over here? Actually, this is that icon, actually. Um, you uh, you pay three less for it. This is not three back. This is three less for it, which is better because it's easier to sneak in there. Industrial Center, spend seven bucks to increase our steel production by one step. I think this one's going to be a great pick for us because it also lets us put a factory tile adjacent to a city tile, which means I can place it next to Pink City over here and screw up their adjacencies um, and stuff like that. It's a building card, which we have the award funded for it, and it lets us increase our steel production Production, um, which if we do this a couple of times early, we'll be able to build more building cards cheaper. So we're going to grab that. You like the Earth Office? I, maybe. I mean, maybe if I grabbed it, then I'd play a bunch of Earth cards and then I'd appreciate it. But a lot of times I don't grab a lot of those. Aquafire Pumping is interesting because it lets you build ocean tiles very, very, very cheap. Right? I mean, you have to play this in the first place, although it does act as another thing for our goal. And then you can place oceans for eight. I'm a little leery about this, especially in the AI, because the AI tends to place these oceans very early. When we play with my friends, a lot of times the terraforming ends up being quite slow. We really like to build up the engine, and so there won't be a lot of terraforming until a few turns into the game when all of a sudden it starts happening super fast. Pumping lets you put the steel to use? Well, I mean, to build it, I suppose. I'm definitely getting Industrial Center. Oh, you're right, there's an Earth tag on Convoy. If you, if you buy Earth, you should buy Convoy, and now you're paid out for three turns. It's a waste of your time. Wait, you can buy Oceans with Steel? Oh! Do I, do I buy this and try? You know what? Let's try. I think you either go two on the left or two on the right. Yeah, I, Bostwick, I think I, I think I agree. Let's go the two on the left. Let's lean into this. Convoy's pretty expensive. If we... Oh, we do have some titanium. Right, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's still... If I could play it this turn, I would do it. But I can't. With the titanium, it costs 30. Um, well, actually, it costs 33 because I have to buy it, and I only have 28 left. So if I could do this now, 18 is a lot, I'm, I'm going to say. Yeah, sign up a good game, you want all the things. It's very easy to buy too many cards, then you don't have enough money to actually play them. I'm going to do it, well, you know what? Let's, let, we got we got to keep this moving. I actually don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this game in two hours with all the talking I'm doing. All right, we get the first action. I can still raise the temperature for the heat production, which is tempting. Okay, first of all, I know for sure I want to get down the industrial center. Because I think, I think I want to plop it here. So I'm going to use my one steel to make it a little cheaper. I'm going to plop it here. I could place it on the titanium and get that. I don't know. I like the idea of another card. I'm addicted to cards early on. What do we get? Cartel. <laughs> Increase your mega credit production by one for each earth tag you have, including this one. Guys, why didn't I take the earth tags? <laughs> So now the big question is, do we play the rover construction or do we go asteroid? Which will give us the heat production. Now, I mean, we can play the rover construction later. Actually, no, we won't have enough for that. Corp has an earth tag, that's true. We'll probably, we'll see about gra drafting another one. I can play it now for a buck or two bucks actually, which actually is not bad. The rover construction will give me $2 back. Which means if I play the rover construction now, I can increase the heat on the next turn if it's still viable. Hopefully no one increases the heat. We'll see. But let's get this down. Uh, can't use titanium to place it. Um, you can use titanium to make space tags cheaper. 
Oh yeah, Upsteel production. You know what? That is much better. You're right. I want to use an action to spend my credits to increase my steel production. No, we have to do that. So we're not going to get the heat bonuses because I'm sure one of the guys is going to do it. If not now, then the next round. But yeah, thank you for rem reminding me of the steel production. That's very important. Yeah, there you go. The AI increases the temp, does that. And... Oh, city was placed, so we got money back. Hey, hey! Oh, someone even has enough heat bank to increase the heat themselves. All right, um, I can... Okay, well, first of all, I definitely want to go and do this. And then... Thank you. And then I can rad suit, because there's two cities now. So I'll play this. I'll get two bucks back because of my uh, corporation and increase my income by one. Beautiful. The sooner we do it, the better off we're going to be. So we'll have 26 bucks added to our income or to our money next time. He's usually the first track finish my game. It really, again, I, it really depends um, when we play with my friends. Usually it's one ta track that gets focused on, weirdly. Um, with the AI, I don't know. So one thing to note is when the game will end. Um, without Prelude, it'll, and it might end as early as Gen 10, might end as late as Gen 12, but that's pretty much what you're looking for. Gen 13 is an excellent comic book series. With Prelude, um, it could end as early as eight because the game gets accelerated a lot. Although nine and 10 is, is much more common over here. We could sell Cartel. I'm not gonna, well, let's see. If I sold Cartel now, it wouldn't do anything for me. So I'm gonna hold on to it for now. And I think just pass. Uh, yeah, what? I don't know if I can find out what that is. I don't, that's not a city. It's another card that got placed down for something. I don't know. I don't, uh, there is a log that we can access, but I think. Longest play at Gen 16, stalling bad. Wow. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass. Oh, it's the Mohole project. Thank you. Oh, which gives heat generation. Ah. And counts as a city? Interesting. Mm, does it? No, because... Well, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, Deep Hole, yeah. Um, in the game Surviving Mars, which I'm also a big fan of, uh, you can build the Mohole project in there, can't you? No. Ah! Uh, Alpha Centauri! Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. You can build Moholes later. Yes. I should play Alpha Centauri again. Okay! Time to purchase some cards. Medical Lab, um, building tag, which again, we're working towards that award. I, I need to look at the milestones and see if we were near anything or can work towards anything. But it still keeps us towards the award. It's a science tag, which might unlock some stuff later and increases our money for every two building tags we have. That's really, that's really quite swell. Advanced alloys, I think we're also gonna grab. It means that our uh, titanium and our steel are worth one more. Steel's worth two normally. It's going to be worth three. Huge boost, 50% more. Titanium's normally worth three. It'll be worth four. 33% boost, really nice. It's another science tag. Oh, they're called boreholes, not moho. Okay. Going to grab that. Grab this. Did we already have a science tag in play? No. But lightning harvest needs three science tags. We're going to have two. It's a really good tile. I think we get these three and not do the giant ice asteroid. It's a, it's a big ice asteroid. Big ice. Good good, good card. Not what we're going for over here. So we're going to go with these bad boys. Uh, I'm very happy. So we're, we are looking for another science tag in the near future. Yeah, I know it's giant, but big ice sounds like, you know, sounds like funny words. Too many good cards. Yeah. It's really easy to buy way too many cards. Because a lot of them look really good, and then you realize you can't play them all. Oh, maybe I had a science tag in hand. Maybe that was it. Yeah, you. I think the windmills are science. Yeah, so I guess we're going to be good. We uh, we just need the oxygen to go up. Need people to place more greeneries. Okay. So there's nothing about to hit over here, so we don't have to worry about that. No one's funded another award, and currently we're not really in a position to compete for anything that we know about. Um, 
Again, I'm blue, not green. I have to remember that. You know, we're nowhere close to hitting any of these targets. So I can pretty much just play for um, general economy and various things. Now, you want to wait for the medical lab for as long as possible. Now, I'd like to play the alloys before I use steel to play for pumping. But I think that's our play. I think we go alloy, pumping, and then use my actions if I can still afford them. When Vantra's physical game, you're less likely to buy as many cards. <laughs> Maybe. What's funny is the default board, one of the milestones for it is having 14 cards in hand or something like that. <laughs> okay. We got to do... If I play this, so I have 17 left. Um, now, aquifer pumping will cost me 12 bucks, which leaves me five left. That's with the discount, which means I can't do this. I guess we don't play the aquifer pumping this turn? Oh yeah, windmill, no science tag. So I still do need to draft another one. If we sell the cartel, does that give me enough? Not... No, because I think I'll still be short one. How many building tags do you have already? We have three. So this will be our fourth, which does count. Oh, sorry. Go away. This will be our fourth, which does count, so our income would increase by two. Which is probably worth doing, and we'd get two bucks back. So I think we advanced Alloy's medical labs. I know steel will be six. I counted six. I mean, we do this first no matter what. I'm sure of it. Whiskey and chocolate? Hey, no one, thank you! Oh, hang on, it's refreshing over here. Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, you mentioned it, so I assume it means you might play it soon. I hope, I kind of want to. My favorite Civ and the faction quotes are so good, for I have tasted the fruit by sociopathic th technologist. How can you go wrong? Well, playing Civ 4 is making me really feel the Alpha Centauri vibe. Okay. So... Yeah, so if we play the aquifer pumping, it would cost me 12, which leaves me with five. I would have to sell two cards to be able to use industrial center, which I don't think I want to sell two cards. I'm okay with selling cartels, but really nothing else. So I don't think I play aquifer pumping. Therefore, I think I play the medical lab, um, which I will easily be able to do this and use my ability. Um, because again, it's going to only cost me seven with the discount and it'll give me two bucks back. It'll be fine. Yeah, I think we're going to go medical lab. Even though the earlier you do this, the better. But no, hopefully no one's going ham on the oceans, and then we can we can start doing it next turn. Or you could pass and hope someone plays a city. Oh, that's true. I'm actually not in a rush. Because if someone plays a city, I get two bucks back. Okay, you know what? Yeah, because nothing I'm doing right now depends on timing. Unless someone kills my steel, which can happen. Yeah, good point about the delay. When I play with my friends, we actually, to uh, keep the game sped up a little bit, we actually house ruled that if you um, if you pass at all, it's the end of your turn. You can't. So we, we say you can't do one action and pass because we end up in this like weird game of chicken where everything's being delayed. Uh, so we there's a there's a popular kind of flat fast play option we do in real life, um, where yeah, you if you if you if you take less than two actions, it's the end of your turn, which is quite nice. Uh. Yeah, so no city got built. I hope I was talking, but I don't think so. That's just medical lab. I'm just playing against AI for this because, you know, all the talking, I, I didn't want to keep things slow for everyone. Plus, if I was playing against a, uh, a fr like, viewers or things, they could look at my cards and know my plans. So I'm going to increase the steel production. And that'll be that. It counts the pump. The pump counts itself. So yeah, we went from one income to two, to three rather. We, we increased by two. So we're going to add 28 new credits next turn, plus the six, and that's going to be okay. So that's it for us. We did our actions. Yep, we can just pass for this generation. Everyone else already has. Sometimes you can get a lot of turns um, during a generation if you have a lot of cards with, uh, with actions on them. Whether or not that's a good thing depends, right? It doesn't mean you're winning just because you're doing more. All right, fifth generation.
So this is quite good because the temperature is high enough. We can use this to place a cheap ocean. But the thing is, we're already placing cheap oceans, right? Because we pay eight with our card, plus we get the discount from steel. So I don't think we need permafrost extra extraction. Keeping in mind, this would cost us 11 because we have to buy the card. Um, wave power is really nice. Again, we get two bucks back because it's got a victory point on it. Plus anything with victory points is good because you can win the game. Power is something we're going to want some later. Uh, we know there's going to be ocean soon. This is going to be playable very, very, very soon. Now let's talk about regular theaters. This would be an extra science card. And we do want a third one. I <sighs> here. Okay. You uh, with an action, you can add a microbe to this card or remove two microbes to raise the auction one step. You can use an action once per round. So we can go add a microbe, Next generation, add a microbe, next generation, remove two microbes to increase the oxygen. These sorts of things become really nice if you get more cards that have these mechanics because you get stuff that adds more microbe cards and different things like this. Um, I'm thinking of just buying wave power. I know we want a science tag. Lightning harvest is really good. You know, you're right. It is, it's, so it's one VP every three turns. Likely we're gonna be able to get two VP out of this. And it does actually, you know, it's terraforming rating, so it does technically improve our income as well. Is it worth the cost? It's also a science card. Yeah, people want us to do it. All right, we'll do it. Hopefully we got enough money to make all our turns. Flooding's a, an attack card. It like hurts someone else, right? Oh, someone's in, going to be importing water from Europa. Which is too bad. We were really hoping to be able to use our card to place as many oceans as possible. We're going to have a little competition there. Okay. We're not near any milestones over here. Uh, we, we're still not near any milestones. The award situation... How are we doing on the uh, contractor, by the way? We're still third overall. People are going crazy on the building cards, but we had to know it. Well... I think we want to get, we need to get the aquifer pumping as early as possible and the regoliths. Um, and we want to use our actions. I think we have to prioritize the aquifer pumping. I don't think we can do everything this turn though. Pay this, it leaves us with 10, well, plus the 9 from over here, so it leaves us with 19. We can play the regular eaters, then we'd still have three buck, or six bucks left over, which means I could do this action, but I won't actually be able to use the aquifer pumping. Or I don't do the regular eaters. Might make it hard for us to get the second point out of it, but I think we do that. Well, we sell the cartel, we get one buck back. I don't think that makes a difference right now. We could also play it to get two income. Although the sooner we do it, the better. And someone might place a city. So here's the thing. I think we play the aquifer pumping and then pass. We want to try to delay until we hit a city for as long as possible. Or I could play the regular theaters and then put down the lightning harvest. On the other hand, if I do this, I mean, we might be able to play the wave power this turn if I don't do the regular. Anyway, we're going to, we're going to play this. We'll discount it as much as possible. We're going to pass and see what happens. Oh, you're right. And depending on where we put the ocean will get money back or resources. Because whenever you play next to an ocean, you get two bucks back for each ocean. So if I put an ocean here, I'll get four bucks back. Which makes me think, is that where we'd want to put it? Pretty much, yeah. I don't want these plants. We get titanium. I am titanium. Titanium doesn't do anything for us right now. I think we want to put the ocean here. And maybe I should do that right away, rather than wait for a city, because I think it's going to be more important that this happens. And hopefully someone still plays a city. Let's do this. And we get a plant. A plant can be turned into a greenery. One steel and two bucks might be better. Over here. Oh, that's true, because that would have been worth three. But the plant... The steel would have been better now. The, the the plant is better a little in the long run. Basically PC version tabletop game? Yeah. 
It's not only PC, it's also available on mobile. This is a reminder, this is a sponsored stream. Uh, you can do exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, what game, uh, get a link. There's a new DLC for the Hellas and uh, Elysium maps, which is one of the real life expansions. Um, I'm not following, did someone play the city? I think the answer is no, that's too bad. All right, we got 15 bucks left over, no steel. Uh, I probably still want to raise our steel production. Although I can wave power. Eight. Yeah, there we go. I can wave power and it will give me two bucks back. So I, I have more than enough over here. Yes. Okay. So wave power. Done. And because it has victory points, we get two bucks back. Not that we needed it for this. I'm sorry, did I get... Wasn't I a seven? Did I get three bucks back? It's three bucks back! Well, hell! Even better. Either way, I didn't need it. I had enough to do this, but, you know, we're happy about the money. <laughs> cool. All right, well, we definitely have an economy going on, which is nice. Our terraforming rating is pretty decent. You know, only one person has more, and terraforming rating is income. Plus, we have actual, like, mega credit income. We have a lot of steel income. We also have a little bit of titanium sitting around for whenever we get a science or space card. Um, so I could sell the cartel, but having four doesn't do anything for me yet. So there's no reason to sell it now. We may as well hold on to it and then see what shakes out later. I think we're just going to pass here. Yeah, 50% richer than I think I am. Yep. This VTOR is not necessarily an exciting corporation, but it's actually working out really well. Because you're already kind of incentivized to take project cards that have victory points on them. And now we're we're getting money back, making them cheaper. We're not close to any milestones, no. We're also not in a good position to, to fight for a lot of the awards. I mean, if I plopped more things down here, I don't know. Every time I see Copula City, I think um, in the movie uh, UHF, the advertisement for Spatula City. It's Copula City! Copula City! Copula City! So this um, lets you place a city cheaper... It does have a requirement that auction is under 9% or 9% and lower, which it definitely is. Um, it's a building tag, which we like, and setting up some cities is very, very useful. It lowers our power production by one, but we have a power production and then gives us income. I think we absolutely want that. Algae needs there to be five oceans, which we're going to be very close and gives us a huge amount of plant production, which is pretty sexy. Corporate stronghold is negative victory points, which does not trigger our corporation. Um, negative victory points are bad, but it's really cheap and gives us more income as well. And then ho hopefully use this to place the city somewhere good and work some more uh, things. Energy tapping is worth negative points because you actually you are stealing power from someone else. We still have a crap ton of cards in our hand, and we'd like to play several of them. I think we buy Copula City and nothing else. Although I gotta say, the Algae is a good card. Yeah, we get too many from our cities from uh, from Rovers, period. So you're right. Rovers would make the Corporate Stronghold even cheaper. Do we get this as well? And everyone thinks... Al Algae is really good. It's really good. Get all the cities and tapping. People, are, so so see, you guys are doing the thing where we want all the cards. <laughs> okay, what's this turn going to look like? We got 32 bucks. Well, effectively, we can think of this as $44. I want to play all everything but Cartel, really, currently in my hand. That's, uh, we get a discount from this. So that would be 21, but it's actually 18. Uh, this is actually 21 total money for to play all the cards that are currently in my hand. 21 total money. Um, and another 15 over here brings us to 36. And I said we effectively have 44, which only leaves us with 8 more bucks. Which we, means we can't play any of these things, except energy tapping. Um, assuming we only buy, only buy energy tapping. <coughs> Much of the steel will go. Yeah, but we just, again, I'm just treating this as like a total, right? This is just plus 12 to what we have. We have 44 bucks in, in some, some combination. Oh, wait, will you get some money from placing this back? Yeah, I know we can build the cities with iron. Have people not. I have $32, but I'm adding in the 12 from the iron, which is 44. 
Now we can ignore the steel. And just pretend we have 44 money and no steel. But, but Quill, you can do this with steel. Shut up. Uh, place in the ocean will give me some money back. That's true. And then we got the rovers. So effectively, we could think of ourselves as if we did place both cities, it'd be effectively the same as having $44. Or sorry, $48 because of the rovers. And... But steel is heavier than feathers, exactly. Steel is, is, is fungible. I'm just gonna, you know what? Let's just grab these two. Just, let's just move on. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, Inventor's Guild's a nice building. Can you steal steel? Well, you can actually, I think there's stuff for that. Or at least you can blow up someone else's steel. Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da. So over here we get four bucks back in a plant. Here we do get the two bucks and the steel, which maybe we do need because it's worth slightly more, right? Four dollars is effectively a five dollar play. Although long term this is better because with the plant it ends up being more. But this is slightly more tempo for the moment if I put things there. Or I go here for the titanium, but we still don't have a space card. Maybe we do that. We definitely, we're, we're in competition for the ocean stuff happening. So we're going to do this. And yeah, we'll use two. If we used more, then we would go negative here, which would be stupid. And it is bringing it down by three each, right? Yeah. Okay. We're getting the full value of this. So use this, use that. Let's go here for speeding up the early game a little bit more. Although this does mean someone else can place an ocean here and get six money back, which I hate giving them that, but. So we could skip, but I think what we want to do is we want to place a city because we want to find a good spot to stick the city. Now, if someone hadn't gone here, I would have done that because it would be adjacent to greeneries because those are worth a lot of points later on. Um... We could go here because it's sort of ruined some... Someone might be incentivized to put a greenery there because it'll be next to their city and we'll get a point later on. On the other hand, we could put here for maximum steel and then keep building around it and get more and more steel. Like if we go here and then we put a, a greenery here, then we get a bunch of money back from the ocean and then we just greenery around our one city. Or maybe we end up building a second city, say here, and we put greeneries in between or something like that. We could also put it next to the ocean and get the money back immediately. Um, I like to place a city usually where I can greenery the hell around it. So I think I'm going to go here or here. So I'm going to go there. Again, I'm just going to start picking some things. We might end up losing the game, but I, I need to like finish this on, you know, in a reasonable amount of time here. We got uh, less than an hour left to finish the game. So we're going to play Spatula City, and I'm going to put it over here and hope we didn't make a terrible, terrible mistake. All right, we're going to speed run this done we get money back we get more steel so we're going to be able to afford more of our construction it's going to be wonderful and i want to build it fairly early because um i didn't want to lose the spot to something else same same sort of logic with the ocean mm -hmm. i know i'm not on a greenery spam build but we still want to sort of make some of these kind of plans some of these ideas we'll build some greenery probably oh, that was a weird sound Temp's getting up there. Okay. So, uh, I still want to do this, because more steel... I mean, at some point, we don't need more steel income. Uh, in, on the normal map, the default map, there is a award which is having the most total steel and titanium at the end, and we'd be in a good position to compete for that, but it's not in here. Um, algae will let us build more greeneries. Uh, also, we want to get the regular the eaters as early as possible. We can play both of these. It would leave us with four bucks, which isn't enough to do this unless people place a couple of oceans. Um, oh no, we still have some steel. Oh no, we have steel left, but neither one of these is a building tag. That's a shame. I think I'm gonna play regular theaters pass. And we, we I mean, we want this for science clearly. I'm going to try to delay as long as possible and hope that we can get a city still uh, going on. Yeah, green, standard greener is a good idea. 23 bucks 
for three VP. Yep. And the income. Yep. Yeah, we don't need we don't need to place have plants to place greeneries. Okay. Ten bucks. Oh, I'll get money back from Lightning Harvest. I forgot about that. Now that I've got my three science tags, I can play this, which brings me down to two. I get three back, which would be five. As long as one person places a city, we'll be okay. Or I can sell Cartel and another card, which won't get there. Yeah, well, I mean, we're going to do... We may as well do Microbe and Pass right now, because we're definitely going to do this. And yeah, I can't eat anything, so we'll just place a Microbe on that. We'll confirm. And I'll just skip. <laughs> Although these two have already passed, so unless red plays a city, which is almost, yeah, it's not going to happen. Okay, so this is the end. We got five bucks. Oh, sorry, ten bucks. I could spend seven. So I can either increase my steel production by one. Lightning Harvest gives me both power and money. And more money back. This is worth more than the steel production boost. So we're already out. Now it's a question between algae and the Lightning Harvest. Two plant per turn versus the power and the money. I do start next turn, but we want to lock in as much, like, income before the end of the turn. I also think algae. Yeah, I also think algae. I think the two plant production is going to be worth more. Power is plus two income? Well, I mean, it's one income and one power. This is two plants. I mean, either way, we're getting plus two total income. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. And I think we are going to maybe see if we can grab another city card. What's nice is all the city cards have building tags. So they're quite nice for what we're trying to do anyway. If I can build a second city and then maybe we just start dumping money on greeneries. It actually wouldn't be bad at all. You can win some games without ever placing a single tile on the board. And other games you can win by having tons of tiles on the board. If, uh, if people aren't playing a board-heavy game, you kind of want to get in there because you're going to generate lots of victory points. So the way it works is um, your green... First of all, when you place a greenery, it increases oxygen, which is worth one TR, which also boosts your income and gives you a point at the end of the game. However, if the oxygen meter is full, then you no longer get the O2 boost when you place a greenery, which means you no longer get a terraforming rating. But you can still place greeneries, and it can often still be worthwhile because greeneries... Every greenery you have on the board at the end of the game is worth one point. And your cities, cities aren't worth points by themselves, but for every greenery adjacent to them, whether you own it or not, you, the city gets one VP. So in a sense, when you place a greenery next to one of your cities, you're getting one point for the greenery itself, one point because it's a, this from the city being next to the greenery, and potentially one point from the terraform rating, which is three. So it's very valuable. Um, Noctis City. Now, Noctis City on the normal map has to be placed in a very specific tile. On this map, Noxus City isn't a, a tile, so you can place it anywhere. So this is quite good for us, because it's only 18. Normally placing a city is it 25, the standard project cost? Yeah, 25. So this is 18, plus a 3 to buy it, which is 21, but we can offset it with steel. Um, it does eat one of our power, um, which is one, one of the things most of these city cards have in common, but gives us income. The standard city project doesn't eat power. It does give you one income. I think we want this. We're going to be doing power because we're going to be placing lightning harvest, if nothing else, and at some point windmills. So we can we can go lightning harvest, Noctis city on our turn. We're going first, so we can put it in a decent spot. That sounds good. Cloud seeding costs you income, but gives you tons of plant production. It takes heat away from someone, which maybe... I don't think I'm going to optimal arrow breaking. It does make space events cheaper. Uh, or Well, it gives you stuff. It gives you money and heat. This is from all your, like, um, asteroids and stuff like that. I don't think I'm interested, although we'd be able to pay it, play it for free with our titanium, but I... I don't think I particularly care about it. Titanium mine is a city, is a building tag. It gives us titanium production as well. I think I'm just going to knock the city and stop. It does have a building tag. You're right. But, okay, let's figure out our play over here. We got we to do some math. Um, this here is 18 extra, 41, 51. Okay, we have 51 money. This is often when I have to bring out, literally break out a calculator and get out my phone and get the calculator. We have 51 money um, available effectively. This is going to cost us 21, which leaves us with 30. Um, I would like to do both of these, which is another 15, which leaves us with 15. 
and then and we have to play Lightning Harvest. So we're going to play Noctis. So this um, this will effectively only cost me five, which leaves me with ten, which means I can also play Windmills and have a little bit left over. Um, alternatively, if whoa, if I bought the Titanium uh, mine, I wouldn't have to build the Windmills right away. I can afford the Titanium mine. Oh yeah, and plus two from the Rover. Yeah, I think we're good. We'll buy both of those. And again, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop trying to take so much time here. It's bad. I'm stressed because I don't want to make a mistake. When I play with my friends, it's all secret. They don't know what I got. They don't know that I'm making a stupid draft. <laughs> okay. So it's going to be power into Noctis City. Because I think I want to place it here. And then we can greenery here. If we get another city, we might end up doing there. And then you just greenery in the middle in the triangle, which is kind of nice. The other thing you can do is you could place it something like um, here or here. Because then, so, okay, if I place it here, I have one greenery spot adjacent to two cities, but that's it. Whereas if I place a city here, I've got two spots I can build greeneries, greeneries adjacent to two cities. Um, the difference, I won't be able to build a city here, because you can't build cities next to other cities, barring some weird cards. I could go here, which would give me money back, and then a greenery here gives me money back, and then I do this. Yeah, don't forget the ocean power. Yeah, Shit, I would like to place it here. Okay, we've got a lot of places we can still build Noctis City. We're not going to get screwed if someone builds it here or here or something like that. We've got other places. Whereas we'd really be quite sad if we missed out on this ocean spot. If I place Noctis City, do I fulfill a milestone? I don't think so. Oh, uh, can we get something else with a requirement? Yeah, hold on. As soon as we got Lightning Harvest, we can do the Tactician. No, I think we can do that. We No one's going to compete for that. Oh, shit. I can almost get Diverse Fire as well. Do I have a new tag in here? Not Earth, because I already have Earth from my Corp. I don't think I have a new tag here. Do I have power already? I already have power. Well, there are two spots with triple adjacency. You're right. I think knock this on the top left of the ocean for money and greenery. Money? Yeah. Put it here. I think I like it. I think I placed Noctis, and you're right. Since there's two oceans, unless someone, unless both these get built, in which case I'll be cranky AF. Um, but I can build it here and get the plan. It's not the end of the world. I'm going to knock this first. Sorry. Which means I'm going to lightning harvest first to get power. And yeah, I can Tactician, but no one can beat me to Tactician, and no one's going to complete... Well, someone might be able to Energizer. They might be able to place a power and do Energizer. Uh, theoretically, someone could... The red or yellow could play a ta card with two tags, but probably not. Okay. So I think we knocked this now. Oops. Oh no, it's three each. So there you go, we'll play it for zero, because we're awesome. And I'm gonna play it here, and then we got a good greenery spot there. So it sucks that there's nothing on this tile, but we do get two bucks back from the one ocean, that's okay. And then we get more money from our rovers as well, which is groovy. Oh, Earth Catapult's such a good card. Damn. Um, no, oh. Hang on, we'll have to wait for the animations to finish. We can take a look at Earth Catapult. Oh, research. Just. Gets extra cards. <laughs> Neptune <laughs> should be in bed. Now, oh, stay up for uh, Eurovision. Um, how do I look at your cards and play effects? Yeah, Earth Catapult. When you pay a card, you pay two ME le or Mega Credits less for it. And he's already got Research Outpost. When he plays a card, he plays one less for it. And when he plays a space card, he pays two less for it. Wow! So many discounts for green! That's crazy! <laughs> okay. Um, I think we ocean to make sure we don't lose both these possibilities, and then we unlock the milestone.
oftentimes getting like one milestone and maybe like benefiting from one award is all you need to sort of put you over the top. If, assuming the rest of your play is okay. So yeah, tactics. So five victory points is a lot. Oh, the Blood Mood. Wait, Lunar Eclipse this Monday? Oh, that's cool. Or Sunday evening. I will take a look at that. That's really interesting. All right, a green player has passed. So he's done. United Nations is done. We are getting close to another one of these little sweet spots. It's possible that, yeah, I think that the temperature sweet spot, which when it hits zero, you get to place an ocean. I don't think that's going to do anything because the oceans are going to, oh, they're already gone. Wow. So, all right, that happened a little faster than expected. All nine oceans have been placed. Like there are a couple more water tiles over here, but there are no more oceans to play. Vitality is around mean, midnight Eastern time. Interesting. Cool. I wonder, can I see it over here where I am? All right, well, at least we know we don't have to worry about this anymore. Um, we can we can definitely just go ahead and put another token on our regular theaters. That's fine. I'm gonna pass. Maybe someone's gonna increase the oxygen. I can't greenery, which would be nice. If someone increases the oxygen, I can put down windmills. So I'm just gonna delay rather than play something else, and we're gonna see what happens. Miss the ocean to get a milestone you already had. Oh, you're right. I didn't think that many oceans would get placed, but you're right. If I, uh, well, I used my aquifer. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna buy, spend full money to aquifer. So I still used my power to get an ocean. I wasn't gonna use this to get the other one. So yeah, you're right. I could have used this to place another ocean instead of the milestone because I was locked in on the milestone, but. I, I kind of I'm hoping I can get diversifier. We need we need to find another tag in our next turn. Okay, I'm gonna go. What is that? Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna use this again. I, I, this might be the last time we use this though, because our iron and steel production is pretty crazy. Yeah, maybe if we can get a, a space tag, that would be ideal, because we have titanium. I'm going to use this. I'm going to skip one more turn. I don't think anyone's going to increase the O2. <laughs> yeah, next turn we can burn a microbe to uh, to increase the O2. And if we can do it at the right time, we can get a, a free temperature increase at the same time. Okay, didn't happen. So I'm going to play the titanium mine. And... That's us done. We still have the cartel to probably sell at some point, but right now it doesn't enable anything. Do, 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 do. Oh, you're right. I would have got money back. It actually would have been worthwhile to play the aquifer because I forgot about the money back aspect for the extra TR. Yep. Nope. That's true. I was just thinking of the full cost. So we already, okay, we, uh, do we have a plant tag? Yes, we do. Dang. So unfortunately, we cannot get a new tag from any of these. Now, restricted area is quite interesting. You spend two to draw a card. Normally, buying a card costs three. Now, you're getting this blind, but it feeds a lot more cards into it. It lets you put the restricted uh, special tile. You just plop it down somewhere, use the screw someone else's placement, or get some resources on a tile. That's not bad. It gives us extra science tags that we might use for, like, some crazy science cards later. Nitrate reducing bacteria. Action. Adds a micro to this carb, or remove three microbes to increase your terraforming rating by one step. It does start with three microbes, so it immediately is worth like one terraforming rating for 11. I'm not sure that's a win. Commercial district is very cool. So you place this. Uh, okay, decrease your energy production by one step, which is fine because we have the energy. Well, we don't currently have it, but we have windmills um, that we will almost certainly be able to play soon. Um, increase our M or, or creation or MC. M I don't know how to say mega credits, I guess MC. It sort of looks like an ME as well, by four steps. So we get more income, um, which, and, you know, late in the game, we don't necessarily need. But right now, it's still useful. And then we place this anywhere. And then we get one VP per adjacent city tile. So what you do is we probably place it, say, here. 
screw up other people's cities. Be ideal if someone placed the city here first and we do that. Yeah, it's sort of mega euros. I think they call them mega credits in the game. Um, it's a city, so we get money back. It's another builder tag. Plantation is actually quite good because it places a greenery for a little bit cheaper because we have science tags. We probably do this because it costs 18 in total, but it's still cheaper than the normal um, action, so I think that's worthwhile. This itself is not a city. The commercial district itself is not a city. Oh, wait. You're right. This is not... Uh, that's not a city. That's something else. I don't have a spot. I mean, I could put it here, but I probably don't want to put it next to my own city. I mean, I could put it here, but again, I really want to put greeneries next to my cities. Although, I suppose I, I, I might not want to put a greenery here because it's an opponent's city. You're right, I probably won't place a greenery there anyway. I'd get money back, I'd get the plants. It would be worth two victory points at the end because it's adjacent to two cities. It's probably worthwhile. Now, the question is, do we get the restricted area? To just generate a bunch of bonus cards. I have currently three science tags. So this would give me a fourth. I think I like it and we might find a missing tag. I think we're going to do it. Just is good to me. 14 for two. I don't think it would be two victory points. I think it would only be one victory point. I don't think we're going to have enough time to get this up to three more tokens. But it'll come in with the three. We'll burn it for a victory point. I don't think it's going to give us a second one. I do already have a plant tag. I'm going to get plantation, though, because it is good value for things we're going to do anyway. Okay. And let's just settle on a decision. It, it is important to know when the game is going to probably end. Uh, and the ocean, I think it's going to end... I'm betting we don't see 12. We'll potentially see 11, but it might end on Gen 10. Oh, Security Fleet is amazing if you get it early. At this point, I don't think they're going to make a lot of... Uh, oh, the last milestone went! They did get Energizer. All right. So we can start thinking a little bit more of... Is there another one of these? Oh, Magnate! Oh shit, we should fund Magnate. And had I realized that, I would have gotten more green cards. But we've got four in our hand, including Cartel, which we'll probably play at this point. Because it's just most green play cards in there. Yeah, I think I'll fund this, actually. The question is, do we do it now or not? If someone else funds an award, um, we'll still be able to fund this, but it's going to cost us 20 instead of 14. Um, which isn't a huge deal. Now, we can, we've also got enough heat that we can increase this, which we're going to want to do, but is, the question is, do we do it early? I think we restricted area fairly early, or we... Uh, right, we can't windmills yet. We need to windmill so we can commercial district. Um, I do want to make sure... We do want to get greenery here for sure, and someone else could place something there that messes with me, and that would be unpleasant. Someone could also do something that steals our heat away, which would suck. Oh yeah, if I plantation, it'll increase the auction, which means I can play, play the windmill. Okay, we're gonna... But also, the sooner we start drawing cards, the better. But I think I'm gonna plantation, because it would suck if we lost that spot. So we're gonna put it here. I think that's a very easy thing. Next to two cities, oceans, and a little bit more steel is very nice. Now, I can windmill now. And then I can play the commercial district next turn. Although, I, I suppose next turn I can still just windmill commercial district. I'm actually thinking about playing restricted area first. Next turn I can pay to draw a card and then see what happens. Oh! Thank you. You're right. Hang on. I need to regolith because I can raise the auction again and then I'll get the bonus temperature. Thank you for catching that. Boom. Done. And then we get two TR for the price of one. It's wonderful. Thank you. I would have been kicking myself. 
It helps when the cards are physically in front of you rather than hidden in a little menu over there because you can see the tokens, you know that it's ready to go. Hey, Diep, thank you very much for the bits. Oh, thank you. I hope you're doing better. Thank you very much. I'm just playing against AI, but you can play online. Yeah, absolutely. And I have played this game with my friends. You can play it, uh, I think this has asynchronous for like play by email as well. I'm pretty sure it does. You ass butt! Urbanized area. So normally you can't place a city next to other cities, but urbanized areas, you have to place it next to at least two city tiles. You ass butt! Ugh, the rage! Rage is real. Um, oh, right. I'm like, why do I have so little money? Because I'm not green. I think I still like the idea of restricted area and see what kind of card we get. We do want to spend our heat before this meter uh, peters out, but I don't think that's going to happen before we get another turn. Yeah, if we commercial here, it's worth... Okay, so a greenery here is worth th four points to us. One from the terraforming rating, one for itself, and then one for each city. The commercial area over here is worth three points to us, but it doesn't give green a point. I'm still thinking we're going to have restricted area first. Yeah, I like the idea. Let's see what kind of cards we get out of this guy. Now, we could go here and get an extra card out of it. We could get here and get plants. Which means we would have enough plants for greenery next turn. This also screws up someone's city. So someone could place a city over here next to this greenery and now they can't. 1-1 one, one north and block yellow. Wait, here? Is this what you mean? That's interesting. Uh, yeah, if we place it next to an ocean, like if we place it here, we get two plants and the water. Although I probably want to put the commercial district here. So I could put it here, actually. I'd only get one plant, but I'd get money back. Over here, uh, maybe he screws up where someone might want to place something. I have a lot of steel, so we've got plenty of money for cards. Yellow's tied with me in these. I, we probably have more points overall. There's a lot of good choices. So, I mean, this spot gives us the most, because we get four bucks back and one plant. Although, I like the fact that this will let me place a free greenery next turn. I screw up the green player. Well, we're already planning on putting the commercial district over here still. I think we go here so we get the greenery next turn. Unless I can place a city here, but I don't think we've got plans to do that right now. Yeah, we, I think we are going to commercial there. So we're not going to commercial here. Which annoyingly means we might give points to the greenery, but we'll see. Commercial district going to open up. Yeah, that's true. It can go here, which is just as good in a sense if we put the commercial district there. Which maybe I should leave this open for a city and then someone and then I can commercial district here. It's gonna be really nice. If you're gonna commercial, you're gonna get two plants anyway. That's true. That's true. If I commercial here, I get all the plants. In fact, if I put it if I put it here and I commercial here, I got enough plants for the green. I don't know if we have enough money for all of this, but we'll see. I'm just gonna do this because screw green. We're gonna we're gonna like absolutely like screw this city as hard as we can. Just we I got I gotta keep moving. Sure, there's another optimal play, but... Okay, do I draw the card now? I, I kind of feel I windmill... I guess next turn I can windmill Commercial District regardless. So I'm going to draw a card now. The windmill gun. Yeah, next turn I can windmill... Like, I can't Commercial District this turn regardless. So I'd rather draw the card first 
and include that in my decision making. So let's do this and see what we get. Hmm. Lock in the award as well. Well, I'm gonna try to be a little greedy and delay the award as long as I can. Although let's suck if someone funds an award now and then funds another one next turn before I go. That that will suck, but it's not like we're not still making some points right now. All right, what do we get? We got Underground Detonation, which is not very helpful right now, although it does count as a building card. Uh, this increases our heat production, which is not going to be terribly useful uh, right now. I think what I want to do is Windmill Commercial District. Yeah, we could sell that and Cartel if we wanted to. Okay, I'm going to Windmill first. Boom, boom, do it for free. And yeah, let's drop the Commercial District. And we're going to drop it here. Plants, money. Okay. And screw this guy. Okay. Not keen on those. We could sell them for more money, although we've got cash. I think what I do is... It will give green a point, but I think I put a greenery down here. Or what? Unfortunately, I can't do a standard city even if I sell things. I mean, it'll give me more points. I did microbe the O2, yeah. Greenery heat award. I think we greenery, then fund the award, and then we can heat next time. Yeah. Do this. We're still getting the O2. We want to make... Ideally, you want to play all your greeneries while the, before the O2 is capped. But yeah, let's fund um, Magnet over here. Wow. Yeah, we've got a good lead here. A lot of the building cards are green, so we're sort of getting a, a two for one. So we've got one milestone, and we're in a good position for two, both awards, hopefully in first place. And yeah, let's raise the temp before we lose out on that um, opportunity. And then if I sell both cards... I could increase our steel production some more. I don't know if we need to do that. We might just bank the money. Because, okay, increasing the steel will give us one more steel every turn. So it's worth three bucks per turn. Um, it cost me seven to do this. So it, we need to have three more turns left in the game to make this pay off. Cartel is a green card. That's true. I don't think I I don't think I use this. I don't think I use the industrial center again. So I think I'm just gonna hold on to these. We'll probably still sell them, but not for the industrial center. Yeah, I think we've got our steel production is too high. Uh, I mean, we might get a big expensive thing, but there's no guarantee. We might just set up with a bunch of steel we can't use. Um, no, we cannot place another. It'll let me use this action. It'll let me spend eight. Well, because it's going to use the steel. It'll let me spend it, but it won't let me place an ocean. So I'm just going to skip. Uh, I still only have the one tag from the corp. I mean, if I play the, the, the card, it'll be two. So it'll be worth an action. It'll be give me a point, but it's not worth it for the value itself. Might be worth it for another green card. Although we've got such a lead on green cards. It's, it's a little narrower with the building tags. I don't think there's any other award we can really compete for. Maybe we can sneak in a, a cheeky second place on something for two bonus points, but that'd be about it. Uh, business contract does let you uh, look at more cards over here, but I mean, you're paying for this. Sometimes you can get a bunch of discounts on earth tags and event cards, or you get it for free or whatever. Uh, this is not useful for us. And we've got the research center. Now, livestock, there's enough auctions so we can play livestock. It gets one point uh, for every animal tag on this, and an action adds an animal. So we're going to get one victory point every round while we keep spamming this. It does lower our plant production by one, increases our income. Um, it's not a bad idea. I don't think we're going for heat trappers, even though it is a green card and a building card. Immigrant city. So every time a city is placed, including this one, inclusive increase our production by one. That might happen a little bit. It's nicer early on. Um... Uh, we don't have the power generation right now. No, we're not looking for a new tag, unfortunately. Uh, that's all gone. 
I don't know if we could take livestock. I don't know about Immigrant City. I mean, it is a cheaper city placement, but we'd have to generate plus one power, which we don't have. We don't have the power right now. So we'd have to either do the standard project, which is not ideal, or randomly draw a card with the research project. The thing is, we're going to get a card from the research project that we might want to play. I'm going to go for livestock because it's going to be worth at least two points. Because we're not ending this turn. It might be worth three, in which case it's a huge win. It does eat some of our plant production, but I think it's worthwhile. Because I don't think we've got enough plant production to get another free plant placement anyway. So um, I'm going to go livestock and nothing else. Yeah, green spam maybe. Um, maybe, maybe place another city manually, actually. Since it doesn't require us to place power. Because that's the thing. At this point, doing the project, the standard project, increase our power. And then placing a, the playing Immigrant City. Is just as much as playing it directly. <laughs> playing Coast Tail says, play Yaya -ya Ding Dong! We actually almost worth uh, watched the Eurovision movie uh, a few days ago. Um, okay, I can still go here. And then greenery here for a double greenery, which wouldn't be bad. Can we build a city on rock and roll? Nice. Okay, first action is probably to draw a card. We actually might be able to make a stab at um, at Cultivator. But yeah, nothing else. Maybe it's possible no one is going to fund the last uh, award. I don't know if I've ever seen that, but it's certainly possible. Yeah, let's draw a card first and see what happens. You're right, immigration was really cheap. It's just the problem of the power, but maybe I should have done it. Ice Asteroid is completely pointless. I probably should have grabbed Immigration City. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of think we're going to place a city here and then greenery in between and then greenery here. Like, just put some more greeneries next to things. I don't know about another city. Do we do another city? Man, I should have grabbed I should have grabbed Immigration City. It would have been worthwhile with the power plant. Yeah. 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 Do I place a city here or not? So we can greenery here and here already for a point each. And here for a point each without giving it to anyone. Yeah, we drew a random card. We got Ice Asteroid, which is completely pointless. Tell me what to do. Do we just greenery spam right now? Well, okay, here's the thing. We might just want a greenery spam right now just to make sure we get our greeneries down while there's still oxygen. Okay, so a city's about as much price as a greenery. Effectively the same over here. Um, City left of the ocean and greenery in between. Uh, I can't. It's Oh, that's right! That's not a city! Hold on. That's not a city. So I could do this. This is a greenery here. I keep thinking this is a freaking city tile. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Because it's going to be worth the point because it's next to a greenery already. We'll get some money back. Put a greenery here. And actually, then it becomes quite enticing to still put a city here. And then just put three greeneries in the middle. Except the triangle farm is actually really good. I have enough to play another city now. I think maybe a greenery first, though. I mean, we want to get the livestock down, that's true. Okay, let's livestock before we do something stupid. And, like, outspend it or something. Yeah, because then if I placed the city, I wouldn't be able to livestock. So, I can't greenery right now unless I got three extra bucks. Which, I can sell all three of these, and then I can place a greenery right now. I can do this and this for free, which I will be doing. I'm not going to be using either of these top two. I think I sell all three of my cards and then put a greenery right here. I like it. 
No, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna sell all three cards. Oh, did someone play freaking Predators? Oh, god damn it! Did they really? Too busy chatting. Someone played Fish. So Predator lets you eat an animal on another card. Someone's converted all their heat, so the temperature is done. Yeah, someone definitely played fish. I mean, we just saw it again. If someone played Predator, I didn't notice it. it wouldn't surprise me. I don't think we're going to get more value out of this, but... Because even if we get enough turns, the auction will probably be full, but we'll see. So we're currently ahead on VP, like on, on terraforming ratings, rather, TR. Uh, I don't know about our overall point situation. It'll be a mystery. Looks like we're going to end this game right at 2, which is perfect, because it was 2 hours of this, followed by 2 hours of RimWorld. With, we're going to try some new mods. Unless it breaks everything. I did test. It, it's not going to break it technically, right? It's not going to crash the game or anything. It's okay. I don't want to do the ocean action. I've got nothing here. Um, no standard projects. We are done for the turn. Oh, Predator's min 11% auction, so no one could have played it yet. Ah. I mean, you can get some stuff to ignore certain, like, terraforming requirements, but... Yeah, I think the Predator card is, like, does it look like a bear? I can't remember the art for it. I think it's a bear. Might be wolves, but... I think it's a bear. Yeah, okay. All right, we're going to be second to play, which is quite nice on what might be the last turn of the game. Because we only need three more increases to auction, which is almost certainly going to come from green. Yeah, this is going to be the last turn of the game. We have no cards in hand. We're going to draw one. Oh, standard technology is great. A little late for it right now. But yeah, after you play a standard project, which is the thing in the button at the top, you get three bucks back, which is really nice. Um, bushes, the, the, the plant production is not going to do anything for us. Dust seal is worth it. It's going to be worth a victory point, and we get three bucks back from our thing, so it's only going to cost us a net of two. It's too bad there's not a building card in here. Now, hold on. What I should check, how are we on magnet? Okay, that's still more than fine. I don't think that anyone's going to play five green cards this turn. A contractor we can't do anything about because there's not a building tag in here, but we might YOLO a random thing. Oh, shit. Oh shit, Dust Seal is maximum of three oceans. Never mind. And this is maximum of temperature, which is too bad. This would have been really good for us, because having this early, we could have added more microbes to another card, and you get these little microbe engines. Okay, so this isn't useful, this isn't useful. I don't think the production from bushes is useful at all, and we don't need another green card, and this isn't useful either. So, we're done. I don't think... Okay... Bushes, okay, because here's the way the game works. You do get one last round of income at the end. Um, and then if anyone's got eight or more plants, they can spend their plants at the end after the game has ended to boo other things. So this is going to bring us up to two, or sorry, three immediately, plus two more, which brings us up to five. Are we going to get three more plants on the board? Pretty much no. We might randomly draw a card from our power, to give us um, an extra three plants somehow, which means we could place another greenery. But um, Bushes is min, yeah, it's min four. Yeah, yeah, Bushes is gonna give us four. And we've got one sitting here for five. I don't think we can expect to get three more. It would have to be something absolutely ludicrous um, to be able to get there. So I think we buy nothing and we just spam standard projects, which it would cost me nine. We'd have to play three, play three standard projects to make this break even, so no, it doesn't matter. Okay, done. And yeah, I'm sure I don't want to buy any cards. So we will rando card first. Oh, someone did find something else. Eccentric. Most resources on cards. Actually, that might not be so bad. Um, 
So we're going to use a restricted area first. This is we'll let you import presidential family. <laughs> what did we get? We got ironworks. Well, it's very cool, but not going to apply to us. I mean, it would give us an extra building card if we need it. Um, it's not a green card, but we don't need that anyway. It lets you convert power, not power production. It lets you convert power into a steel and an auction. It's really nice. And we can, we actually, you're right. We can play it for free. We have no reason to hold on to the steel. There's literally nothing we can do with the steel. So we will play it for free. The qu But I'm going to hold on here. We have enough money for either two greeneries or a city and a greenery. Auction's not filled. So I think what we do... Can you grab the extra card with it? Now, we already used one action. I think... Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to greenery first because we want to get the O2. If the O2 meter is filled, then whether we build an extra city or greenery here is not going to matter point-wise. Is there another... Can't place it here. Oh, hold on. I can city here, but that doesn't matter. Okay, I, no matter what I do, I think placing a city gives me exactly one point. And no matter what I do, placing greenery is worth two. There's a card over here, but I don't care. Yeah, I can't place two greeneries one turn. So we're clearly going greenery. So we get a point for the greenery itself, point for the agency, point for the auction. And if the auction meter is not filled when it's my turn again, um, you know what? I think I made a mistake. I think I should have just, eh, drawing the card is good. I could have just double greeneried. City is, city is two, city is two on top hex. I don't think so. Up north, you can place a city next to crew greeneries. You, oh, you can't place a city next to another city. Are you thinking putting a city here? Because I can't, because it's it would be next to another city. Yeah, it's, it's illegal. Yeah, I think we just greenery, and we hope we can fit in one more for the O2 points. I, I should have just not YOLO'd a card, even though the card might have been God tier, but probably not. I should have just, in hindsight, knowing that it's a crap card, but really knowing that there's probably nothing that would have been better, it would have been better to just do double greeneries this turn to make sure that I get the full O2 value. So it doesn't matter where I place this, I think, but I guess I'll place it here to deny someone else the steal. Ah, there's predators! Don't eat my shit! Don't eat my shit! He ate my shit! Damn it! That's annoying because it makes it harder for us to compete for eccentric. Why couldn't he have eaten the f one of the fish? Bears eat fish. They don't eat cows. Come on, game! So unrealistic! Okay, the O2 miner is not filled up, so we're going to go ahead and do a greenery here. And we're going to do it here. It's three point play, one for itself, one for next to one of our cities, and then one for the terraforming rating. That's quite nice. Once you get into the second half of the game, you're really looking for, like, how can I get the most number of victory points per action? Uh, all right. Let's cow it up. We are going to get another token from our, uh, our things. Oh! Was he the predators and the fish? Oh yeah, because the order changed. I was thinking the guy in the bottom has the fish, but I forgot things moved. He has both the fish and the predators. Okay. So yeah, he was always going to eat my livestock. Dang it. Yeah, because the random card... Yeah, I mean, we are going to be able to play Ironworks for nothing. And I guess we may as well. And yeah, I can't O2. We'll put another token on. How's that uh, eccentric? Oh, I think we might be tied. We are tied. And uh, it is friendly ties. We both get five points. 
Once you can generate another token. Mars is now terraformed. This is the final generation, as expected. Every now and again, you get surprised and it doesn't finish. Okay, uh, I have no standard projects I can do. I could do this, but it's not going to do anything. Um, I think if there's a tie, it it's money that breaks it, so... I'll just pass. We're done. I think. And almost perfectly on the two-hour mark. Wow. It's a great game. I think we're in a good position. I think we've got a decent amount of points on board. Um, I mean, we've got the highest terraforming rating, but that's not much. Uh, likely this is going to be maybe 80-ish points is going to be the victory. So yeah, oh, this is a plant conversion. Um, so anyone who's got eight plants sitting around has one more chance to put down some stuff, which I think Pink did. Game is over. All right. Oh, big lead, big lead, big lead. Big lead! Oh, we're crushing it! What did I say? I thought it was going to be about an 80-point game. I got 79 points. I didn't realize everyone else is so far behind. Wow! I did a practice game yesterday, and I lost. I had... I think I had 81 point. I lost to someone with 84. We crushed it because of you guys. Because you helped out. Wow, that is... That is big. Yeah, I got all three awards. You can see I tied with green... So we both got the five points from that one award. And then in that case, no one gets second place. And then these guys each got a second place in the other awards. And then we had the one milestone. They got had two. Five points for greenery. Our nine from our cities. And then we had nine victory points on our various cards over here. Oh, that was smashing. Yeah, the 15 points from the awards is huge. Because this is, here's the thing, right? Remember, if we didn't get these awards, we'd have fewer points. But those points would also go somewhere else. And that's the, like... Dominating the awards like this, this you deny so many points from everyone else. It's it's a crazy big difference, crazy big difference, because each award it's effectively a ten point swing, right? I lose five, someone else gains five. Yeah, expect you to get two awards. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and yeah, there's another board I can show you. Uh, if we just uh, just very quickly, we're gonna be playing RimWorld in a second here. But if we just load this up, and then just just pick whatever, I don't care. Actually, I should just pick the dump. Yeah, I don't want to buy any cards. It's fine. Go. Cool. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so you can see this board is very different. Look at this. Olympus Mons. Three cards. Ha! Ha! So nuts. And then Elysium Mons over here. Lots of titanium. More cards at the bottom. And the awards on this one are different. Celebrity. Oh. Most cards. Come on! End your turn. Of course, we had to start last. There we go. All right. Celebrities, most cards in play, not events, with a cost of at least 20 mega credits. So blue and green cards that cost 20 or more. Industrialist is most steel and energy resources, not production, but amount bank. We would have been great for this last game. Desert Seller is most tiles south of the equator. Now, what's interesting about that... Oh, yeah, there you go. The mountain went right away. South of the equator, a lot of these tiles are quite poor, right? Compared to, well, right on the equator is great. Look at this green belt right on the equator. Shoomp. But it's south of the equator, so there's a little less quality stuff, but you get an award for it. Estate dealer, most tiles adjacent to ocean tiles. And benefactor, highest terraforming rating. This one's nice, because high terraforming rating, you know, is points. It's currency. So it's a good one to compete for. And the milestones here, generalist. Re increase all six productions. So mega credits, steel, titanium, etc. I have at least one production in each one of those. Specialist, have 10 production of any one resource. I like generalist and specialist being on the same board because they kind of run counter to each other. If you get generalist, you're not likely going to be in the competition for specialist the same way. Or maybe you are because you're just going to go do, you know, building. Ecologist, have biotags, just plants, microbes, uh, and animals. Tycoon, have 15 project cards in play, blue and green cards. So what's nice is Tycoon benefits someone who's spamming a lot of cheap cards, which is not going to lead you towards Celebrity. So they're they're kind of balanced that way. And then Legend, play five event cards, which again, event cards don't count as being in play for either the Tycoon or Celebrity. So there's a lot of different tactics you can take to sort of split things around. You know, if someone's going for one thing, then you, you, you can pivot and try to go for a different award or milestone, which is really cool. Anyway, there you go. Woohoo! Uh, so yeah, we're gonna wrap it up here. Again, this was a sponsored stream for Terraforming Mars, a game I love both 
physically in real life as well as the digital version. It's available on Steam, GOG, Epic Game Store, um, and uh, iOS and Android. Sponsored stream, if you do exclamation mark what game, you'll find a link to the where you can download the expansion we were looking at today, which is the two new maps, which new map radically changes uh, your strategy as well as the new milestones and awards, which are really good. Um, I also would very much recommend the prelude expansion. It's quite spiffy. I'm gonna take off my helmet and hit the mic. That's not good for it. Hey man, I know we're about to go into RimWorld, Ah, uh, where well, I'm going to put the helmet back on, but I'm going to give it a break. So yeah, we're going to take a very short break, give everyone a chance to pee, mostly me, and then we're going to come back with RimWorld with the company and some new mods. It should be very exciting. If you were just here for the terraforming horrors, hey, that's fine. Thank you very much. Love you for it. But hopefully you stick around for the RimWorld, which is just epic. Uh, be right back. Thank you. 